The Luminaries is a book written by Eleanor Catton in 2013 and was awarded the Man Booker Prize that same year. Each of the twelve local men represents one of the twelve signs of the zodiac, and another set of characters represents planets in the solar system. The intricate framework of the novel is based on the system of Western astrology. The book has been recognized with a number of accolades and prizes, including the Man Booker Prize in 2013. After witnessing a terrifying event on his ship en route to Hoki Tika, the main character Walter Moody finally makes it to the smoking room of the Crown Hotel, where he comes into contact with 12 men. From their individual vantage points, the twelve men share with Walter Moody their interpretations of the unusual occurrences that have transpired in the days preceding up to the present night. A politician by the name of Alistair Lauderback was on his way into town about two weeks ago when he discovered the body of a hermit by the name of Crosby Wells. Wells' death appeared to have been peaceful but when his cabin was checked, it was found to contain several thousand pounds worth of gold hidden inside it, as well as an unsigned deed that Wells had seen and which said that Emery Staines, a rich and nice young man, was to pay two thousand pounds to Anna Wetherill, a well-known prostitute who is often found hanging out in Hoki Tika's Chinatown. On the same night that Wells' corpse was discovered, Staines vanished and Wetherill was found unconscious and lying on the road, having presumably tried suicide. She and Gascoigne found out the next day that an unknown individual had sewed hundreds of pounds worth of gold into the lining of her clothing. The council has convened to discuss these incidents and those that have occurred since, and Francis Carver, a violent and scarred man who commanded the Godspeed, the ship in which Moody arrived in Hoki Tika, and who, nine months earlier in Dunedin, had defrauded Lauderback of that same ship by assuming the fictitious name of Francis Crosby Wells, appears to be at the centre of all these events. Carver had blackmailed Lauderback by concealing a fortune in gold inside five dresses that were sent under Lauderback's name. Carver said that he would have Lauderback arrested and imprisoned for smuggling undeclared money if Lauderback did not give Carver possession of the ship. Carver had no choice but to come to Hoki Tika in quest of the fortune when the shipping box vanished and washed up on the coast. Anna purchased the outfits without realizing they contained gold upon her arrival in Hoki Tika. One of Anna's customers, Kui, found the gold in four of Anna's gowns, and while she was sleeping he removed it, replacing it with lead weights. The gold in the fifth outfit, however, stayed since Anna never wore it while indulging in prostitution. After that, he melted the gold down and brought it to the bank, where he was surprised to learn that Staines had stolen it. After listening to the stories told by the other twelve men, Moody gives them his own story, which is that he thinks he saw the spirit of Emery Staines when they were on the Godspeed. The council is disrupted while he is delivering them his narrative by one of Dick Mannering's employees who informs them that the ship has sunk just off the coast. After a total of three weeks have passed, the debris of the Godspeed is brought ashore. Moody is delivered Alistair Lauderback's trunk by accident, in which he discovers letters proving that Crosby was Lauderback's half-brother and a bastard who was born to a prostitute mother. Crosby had first gone to New Zealand in search of their father, and had made several attempts to get in touch with Lauderback over the course of several years, but none of them had been successful. In the letters, he also admits that he earned a large fortune while working on the goldfields, but that money was later taken from him under circumstances that he cannot disclose. Lydia Wells, the widow of Crosby Wells and Carver's mistress, 
makes an announcement that she intends to arrange a seance in order to communicate with the spirit of Emery Staines. Wetherill, who has lately given up prostitution after she paid off her obligation to Edgar Clinch, is hired by her as an assistant. Lydia insists that she and Wetherill became friends soon after Wetherill's arrival in Dunedin, and that she closely monitors her actions. Lydia is recognized as Carver's mistress by Suk Yongsheng, who is an opium dealer for Wetherill and a friend of his. Years ago, Suk took a blood oath against Carver for the death of his father, and he has vowed that he would not stop seeking vengeance until Carver is dead. Lydia is adamant that Suk go to the seance, but when she gets there, instead of channeling stains, the medium talks in Cantonese and reiterates Suk's vow from a long time ago to murder Carver. Following the seance, Suk travels to Carver's hotel in an effort to carry out the murder. Before he can carry out his vengeance, George Shepard, the jailer, shoots him as retaliation for killing his brother, who Shepard thinks was murdered by Sook. Emery Staines shows up at Crosby Wells' cabin the same night, severely wounded. T. Rao Taufare drives him back to town so that he may get medical treatment. Once there, he is reunited with Anna Wetherill who has also been hurt in some way and is also in need of assistance. It cannot be denied that the two of them have developed romantic feelings for one another. After Staines and Wetherill have fully recovered, several charges of criminal activity are brought against them, and Moody offers to represent them in court. The trial discloses the realities that lie behind the crimes among other things, that Carver and Lydia conspired together to steal the gold that belonged to Crosby Wells, that Carver acquired the Godspeed by blackmailing Lauderback, and that Carver murdered Wells by drugging him with laudanum. After the conclusion of the trial, Staines is found guilty and given a sentence of nine months of forced labor, while Wetherill is found not guilty. Carver is brought to jail but as he is being transported, he is discovered dead. There is a strong inference that T. Rao Taufare exacted his revenge on his longtime buddy Crosby Wells by carrying out the murder with the use of a Greenstone patu. After much procrastination, Walter Moody eventually leaves Hokey Tika to begin his search for gold. If you have any suggestion please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.